Hello and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepezani with your top stories this Monday evening. As we reported last week, Julius Malema honored his invitation to the wedding of Mike Gave and Tendai Wanyika. The couple, who were both members of ZANU PF Youth League, were awarded with 6,000 US dollars on Saturday by Mr. Malema. A high profile guest at the wedding, Mr. Malema gave a speech encouraging the people of Zimbabwe. He said, don't listen to imperialistic newspapers. You have achieved a lot. You are running your own country. You are managing your own affairs and you are not controlled by foreigners. That is what we need in South Africa. In Zambia, the government has spent around 2.8 billion kwacha to refurbish the university teaching hospital's new eye clinic. UTH have opened a new modernized eye clinic called the Center of Excellence in Lusaka. The refurbishment comes after the government's pledge to transform UTH into a better institution, which will provide high-quality health services. The project of the center was done by Navabata Ventures Limited of India. The follow-up project is said to cost around 15.5 billion kwacha. In South Africa, at least two people, including a British man, have died after a tourist boat carrying 39 people capsized during a seal watching trip in Hot Bay, Cape Town. Peter Hyde, 64, who lived in Wales, died when his, when his ship turned over and there are still several people thought to be missing. A South African man who worked on the boat is also thought to have died. The Katmuran Mirashka had British and French nationals on board when it capsized near Dhaka Island. A man from Inkai village assaulted his wife and forced her to a village court for not serving him the best pieces of the chicken relish she had prepared. Nomsa Sibanda found herself in serious trouble after she slaughtered a cockerel and kept the breast and leg portion for herself. Under local customs, the back, breast and leg portions of a chicken should be reserved for the man, but Sibanda's husband, Jabulani Ngube, claimed he was only served with the gizzard, wings and drumstick. Ngube said he was stunned the following evening when Sibanda served him sadza with dried vegetables. He, confer he confronted Sibanda on what had happened to the rest of the chicken and assaulted her after she admitted consuming the best portions. In Cape Town, a lack of finances brought about the cancellation of the annual Miss South Africa teen pageant. The pageant, which is linked to Miss South Africa, has been having difficulties with sponsors for a couple of years. The pageant, which was divided into two, Miss South Africa and Miss South Africa teen, will now serve as one platform and the age limit has been reduced. Now with the news of some interesting results in the weekend's international football, here are Liam and Michael. Yes, thank you Charity. Well it was a fascinating weekend of international football with some surprising results, but one result has left my colleague here, Mr Mambo, in a really bad mood around the ATV office. Yes, sadly Zimbabwe fell at the final hurdle, losing 2-0 in Angola and therefore missing out on qualification for the Cup of Nations by virtue of the away goals rule. With a 3-1 lead from the first leg in Harare, Zimbabwe were favourites but crashed out with a 2-0 defeat. Former Manchester United striker Minucho scored twice inside the opening 10 minutes in Luanda on Sunday, and the Warriors never really recovered. Now, we reported last week that the Zim players were to receive $10,000 and some property if they were to qualify, but even that reward was not enough to get them past Angola. Now, Michael, you must be really gutted with this one. Did you see the game? Yeah, I watched the second half of it. Uh, very, very disappointed. And uh, who was to blame? It's, it's easy to point a finger on somebody, but basically the whole team failed. When it mattered most, they failed the nation. Uh, maybe they didn't get enough preparation whatsoever, but going into a match with a 3-1 lead and failing to score, or the manner in which they considered in the first 10 minutes the match was virtually over, we, we expected more. Now, some people have suggested that the Zimbabwe players are a bit too old. Uh, do you think that plays a factor in it? Well, it's, it's hard to pinpoint really where the fault is. Probably the key players didn't perform like the Nyandoros. There was nobody in midfield. The strike force was disjointed. The defence was nowhere to be seen. Uh, basically, the whole team fell. But qualification for the Cup of Nations should be a definite for Zimbabwe. So surely something has to change now. Is it a change of coach, change of players? What can they do? 
Uh, I think it's uh, going back to the drawing board, looking at Zimbabwe a few years ago and Zimbabwe today, there are obviously different teams. Uh, we also have to look at our neighbors, look at Zambia, look at South Africa, uh, look at the surrounding nations. What have they done for them to qualify each time around? And what can we do as well as a nation to make sure we qualify? It's no longer just about uh, looking at who's, who's the best coach locally when we've tried so many local coaches and it hasn't worked. If we bring in probably somebody else with a different perspective, like follow the Zambia route, where they have a French coach, but the guy who's running uh, the Zambian FA is Kalusha Wale. So he's a former player and there's that passion in there. Now, our ATV viewers have been getting in touch in their hundreds on Facebook, and uh, they've been just saying quite how distraught they are at the results. Francis Muzerezero says it was just pathetic, and Teddy Richards says he was left heartbroken after the game. One thing's for sure, something needs to change with the Zimbabwe national side. Now, reigning African champion Zambia scraped through to the finals after a dramatic penalty shootout. Uganda dominated the game but failed to complete the task when Patrick Ochan missed the decisive spot kick in sudden death. Jeffrey Massa scored for Uganda on 27 minutes to level the aggregate score, and the Cranes generally dictated the play, but they couldn't find a way through an inspired Zambia keeper, Kennedy Mwini. He produced a series of saves to keep his side in the tie. Now, the holders scraped through, but it wasn't an impressive performance, was it? Well, they did enough to get there in the end. It's better than Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely better than Zimbabwe, but they're going to have to improve a lot if they're going to retain their title. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to improve. You find that most nations have improved. You can look at the uh, standard that Uganda played, that they played with their hearts, and uh, uh, the, last time, the last time they lost a match at their stadium was in 2005. To date, it's only through penalties, but they won the, the tie one nil. Well, again, we've been asking for your views on Facebook about the Zambian performance and what it means for them going into the finals. Nigel Sazaiba says the coach needs to do something about it. These performances aren't good enough. Whereas Collins Ludberg is a little bit more positive. He said the title is ours to defend. We'll see what happens uh, in the 2013 tournament. Now, as most people predicted, Mali booked their place in the finals with a convincing 4-1 away win over Botswana. That means they won 7-1 overall on aggregate. Goals from Cheikh Tidian Diabati, Modiba Maiga, Mohamedou Samasa and Abdou Traore secured an eighth continental finals appearance for the Eagles. This was the first game for Botswana in their new refurbished stadium in Lavazi, but there was very little for their fans to celebrate as they crash out. Mali, Mali must now go into the tournament amongst the favourites. So, Michael, we talked about miracles for Botswana. It didn't happen. There was no chance of it happening. Uh, Mali is too strong of a team for Botswana. Uh, they're doing well in terms of like renovating the stadium and getting the facilities up to scratch. Maybe in the near future they will be a better team, but... Presently, they see the underdogs in Africa. Now, moving on to Mali, they've, they've put seven past them in two legs. They finished third in last year's tournament. Can they go a little bit better, maybe win it? Well, it may be Mali's turn to win the cup. They've, they've been just about there for the past uh, tournament, so who knows? Maybe on the day they will win. Okay, well, you heard it here. It might be the winners in January. We'll have to wait and see. And finally, we talked about England on Friday. They faced San Marino, the joint worst team in international football. Surely only a goal fest was on the cards. Well, England did win 5-0 in the end, with two goals from captain Wayne Rooney and two for his Manchester United strike partner, Danny Welbeck. Arsenal youngster Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain finished off the goals. A win is a win, but many will feel that England should have scored a lot more against a team of part-time footballers, many of whom have careers away from the game. One sour point of the night was a bad injury to Theo Walcott, who clashed with the San Marino goalkeeper, and had to be sent to hospital with a rather serious chest injury. He will now miss the next qualifier in Poland. So, Michael, we talked about goals, yeah. but you said England can often disappoint us. Is 5 nil disappointing? Well, considering that uh, San Marino has a population of uh, 48,000 and England has a population of 50 million, we would have expected maybe a goal a minute or so, <laughs> just going by the stats. But as we said, so often England disappoint. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's, it's too many international players in our league, or what is it? I think it's, it's the hype that uh, well, the British tabloid put on their players, because they, they, 
they put them up to be super superstars when they haven't yet even established themselves as a good credible team. You had the golden age, the likes of Beckham, Lampard, and Gerard. They were the ones who were supposed to win the World Cup after the 1966 World Cup. But look at what happened. They're all gone. We've got a new crop coming in. So maybe it's, it's, it's time they followed uh, other countries like Spain, the way they did their, their strategies and stuff. Um, we talked about Wayne Rooney. He was captain on the night. Um, he, he did his job, didn't he? Two goals and a decent performance. Yeah, he, he led by example, worked very hard for the team and uh, wish he could play like this every game. Now, England's next game is a totally different task away at Poland. It should be a really tricky tie. We'll be here to discuss that game and several other international games on the cards. Join us then. In today's photo of the day competition, we decided that this picture of Isaac Mandula was our favourite. Keep your photos coming in to us on our ATV Facebook page. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant evening.